Um, my co-presenter is Anna Wilson. Um, we are both, both based in schools of education, um, Anna at the University of Stirling and me at the University of Edinburgh. And over 2020, we have spent some time working together on a project called, which we've um, called Telling Data Stories or just the Data Stories Project. So we want to spend a few minutes just introducing that project and telling you a little bit about it. And then we'll have a chance to talk about some of the methods and try them out also. Um, so this project uh, came about because of a shared interest among um, a, a fairly large and growing group of people in surveillance in higher education. Um, back in 2010, Dan Knox wrote that surveillance systems alter teaching and learning environments in complex ways that are often surprising and at odds with their original intent. Uh, what matters is not practice or purpose, but presence. Um, and these, these kinds of ideas about surveillance in higher education, I think, are really important for us to be thinking about, especially right now, because we've un we're under, all under so much pressure to um, make very rapid adaptations to online teaching and learning, perhaps, in ways we haven't before. Um, and the presence of certain kinds of systems, even if their intention is not um, to explicitly be about surveillance and monitoring um, can have chilling or difficult effects on teaching and learning contexts in higher education. So there's four key things that I want to raise. Um, the first is that learning technologists, technologies sorry, help us um, communicate and collaborate and create, um, as well as store data, keep track of activities, assess performance, remind us of due dates, check for plagiarism, and lots more. Um, lot, some of these technologies, many of them, offer the capacity for increased surveillance, and some of them are being used to monitor or quantify activities. Um, and this is something that um, is sometimes can fly a little bit under the radar when we are making decisions and implementing technologies in education, because Technology use in education generally is often tied to what Audrey Waters has called the EdTech imaginary. And these are the stories that we tell ourselves about the role that educational technology plays in preparing students for the future. And those EdTech imaginaries often don't incorporate stories about, um, about surveillance and the kinds of impacts that we might be seeing from our technologies. Um, but those of us in technology related roles, which I think includes teachers, um, learning technologists and others, are both receiving and creating these ed tech imaginaries. And so we're in this kind of strange position where we're being told a lot of stories about what's happening with technology and education, but we're also telling those stories to other people. Um, and so the story becomes a very important aspect of how we understand what we're doing and how we work together um, to make sure what we're doing is, is what we want to be doing. So when we set out to create this project, we explicitly wanted to explore the role of stories. Um, initially, we were hoping to run face-to-face -face sessions with learning technologists um, in about April 2020 uh, in UK universities. And I don't need to tell you what happened to that plan. Um, but we still, when we couldn't do the, the original um, project the way we wanted to, we still wanted to try to find a way for storytelling to be part of our thinking about um, surveillance and its futures in higher education. And the reason why is because stories we think are really important. Um, we really need to talk, uh, but there's no time to talk. And actually, especially in the context of certain things that are going on in educational technology um, in the last few months, some kinds of speech are actively dangerous right now and, and for people in certain positions. Um, so stories can be a way of talking without constraint. They can be anonymous, they can be fictionalized. Um, and these uh, aspects are, are things we tried to work into the data stories project. Um, and third, um, the, the, the old proverb, um, which you may have heard, which is that the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, um, and the second best time is now. And so if we want to reconfigure the futures of surveillance, we really should start doing that right now, um, even in the midst of all kinds of other competing issues and things that are calling on our time. Um, and we're hoping pragmatically that the story methods that we've developed here, uh, that Anna's gonna talk about in a second, uh, will help us inform the creation of something we're calling a higher education surveillance observatory. And I'll say a little bit more about that at the end. Um, and happy to talk about that as well. 
So that's a little bit of introduction to what we were aiming for here. Um, the data stories project itself and what we were trying to do, I'm going to um, run through very quickly and then hand over to Anna. So this is a scaffolded storytelling tool that uses fiction writing to explore aspects of an interaction with technology and the hopes or concerns that it raises by speculating about what could happen in the future. So this was built as a WordPress plugin. Um, it's part of this really little project involving a really cool multi multidisciplinary research team. Um, and we also were fortunate to be able to work with Pat Lockley, who many of you may know, um, to develop the, the um, plugin itself. And what we ended up with is a three-part data storytelling tool um, that ma that's made up of prompts, mapping, and writing. And I'm going to hand over right now to Anna Wilson, who's going to talk a little bit more about that, that tool and how it works and give us all a chance to try out the prompts. Thanks very much, Jen. So what the idea with this three-part this three-part tool is that we ask people who are engaging with it to start off by thinking about a time that they've recently or perhaps not so recently used or seen and used a piece of technology which either is deliberately being used for surveillance or could be used for surveillance so perhaps even unintentionally and then there are a series of prompt questions that you can access via the website um, so this is what it looks like if you go to it uh, which are basically there to get you thinking about different aspects of that particular experience. So the questions include things like who's being scrutinised, um, what's being scrutinised, uh, what feelings might be aroused in connection with the scrutiny and so on. So there's all sorts of different questions there that nobody's under any obligation to actually answer. Um, but they're there to try and help people start to think about, well, what, what is it that's interesting about this experience? And by answering those questions, they, the answers that you put then go into a, a kind of mapping tool, allows you to move them around and break the connections between them, create new, crea create new connections between them, and perhaps rethink and reconfigure the actual experience you had into something else that you can turn into a fiction and thus perhaps talk about it. Um, so what we wanted to do now was actually stop telling you about it because it's 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 not just us it's it's as jen said it's anybody who's got any connection with technologies in education particularly in higher education everybody's got some experience where they've thought about the possible surveillance there were some things mentioned in the in the plenary session this morning for example the use of office 365 so what we wanted you to do just now was um, we're going to set up some breakout groups and send you into them. And what we want you to do is within the breakout group, just have a discussion about a time when you've used or become aware of a bit of technology that was either explicitly been used for surveillance or might have been used for surveillance. And what we want you to think about is who were the actors that were involved, who was, who was being surveilled, who was doing the surveillance, what were the interactions involved and perhaps think about some of the emotions that might be associated with those. So we're going to let you do that just for a few minutes and we had planned on 10, but it might be slightly less. And then what we'd like you to do after that is just individually go to the data stories creator and have a quick play with the prompts. So um, I guess, Jen, shall we create the breakout rooms for maybe seven minutes or something and then have everybody back and then I'll put the link into the chat so that everybody can go to the creator. I'll do that with more. Great. I will um, send everyone off to breakout rooms now. Um, there should be either three or um, four people in each room and if you um, if you have any issues, uh, try to let us know and we'll try to help. Um, and I don't think there's a way for us to warn you when we're bringing you back. So at some point you will just appear back in the main room. Um, and so we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, Jen. OK. 
Okay, hopefully that worked for everybody. I think we're still recording, Anna, so I'm going to just put myself back on mute for a few minutes. Um, will you flag up when you want to call the groups back? Sure. Um, I take it that they're, you, that they're, not, they're not just forced timed groups? No. Okay. Just to let you guys know, I think you already know that, but um, just the main room is being recorded, obviously not the discussions. So if there yeah. is a point at which, you know, um, you want to, I think it would be nice to keep the recording running so the wrap up is in the session, but I'll leave that up to you. I can press stop at any point. That's fine. I'll just turn off my, um, my microphone and camera for a few minutes. Thanks, okay, Anne. that sounds great. Hi Jen, shall we call them back now because then we've got, we can give them a few minutes at the tool and then have a, still have a few minutes left for discussion. Sure, I'll do that just now. Okay. As soon as I remember how to do that. Okay, I'm going to bring everyone back. Oh, that was quick. Wow. <laughs> That was really quick. It was really quick. Sure, five minutes. So, but so I hope you enjoyed the opportunity to start talking to each other about some of these things. What what we'd like to do now is just get you to. Uh, yeah, I know. There's, there's never enough. If we had a longer session, we would have just given you longer to talk. But so if I can get you, to, if I can get you to go to this link, which is where the data stories creator is. Um, and just have a look at the prompt questions and start thinking about how you might turn those experiences you were started, starting to talk about into a story. And then if you can come back here for, or I mean, of course, you, you do it in another town. Um, if you want to put anything in the chat as you do it, feel free. Otherwise, we'll 
we'll keep fairly quiet for another four minutes and then we can have five minutes of general discussion about how how you've experienced this and what you think is interesting. Yeah, we agree it would be nice if there was a broadcasting feature telling us it's time to reconvene, but um, Hi everyone, thank you very much for um, the chat and the discussions that are happening um, in, the, in the, sorry, I've got Anna on the back channel saying she's lost her Wi-Fi. Um, so it's just me now for the last five minutes. Um, we've got a few questions coming into the um, chat just now and I'm sure there may be others as well. Um, so I'm gonna hand over to, um, I'm gonna hand, over to Richard to facilitate the question and answer bit, but um, thank you very much and looking forward to hearing from you about this. Thank you. Thank you, Jane and Anna. That was very interesting. So um, I think if we just go through the questions, if anybody's got a question, I want to put it through you. I think um, for me personally, I, I find the whole process very valuable and it's, it's a great way to build a narrative around um, the data usage and the data problems we're all experiencing. So let's go through the, 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 the questions. Um, 
I think um, there's, somebody wasn't quite sure how the story creator worked. Um, Jen, do you want to talk through that process? Yeah, so um, I, I put a little thing in the text chat here, but I'll just go over that as well, because it is quite um, an unusual uh, design for a storytelling tool. Um, so the, the first two panes are designed to help the storytellers create um, a sort of sca a scaffold or a structure using story elements that will then be used to then inspire or inform the story that gets written in the third tab. So um, it's basically, you know, the assumption is that everyone has stories they want to tell, but not necessarily the experience of writing fictions. And this is a way of trying to help people think not only about the story itself, but also about the future um, and how to, how to kind of reorganize um, actors and story elements for a more future story orientated um, perspective. So um, yes, and you can see from the existing stories, as Emma's saying, um, how the, the tool might end up being used. Great, Jim, thanks. Um, I think Jim, Jim's asked a very interesting, Jim Turner's asked a very interesting question. What would you do differently if you were doing it again? Yeah, this is a great question. Thanks, Jim. Um, I was thinking about that after you posted it, so glad I had a minute to think about it. Um, I think, I mean, Anna would probably have something slightly different to say, and she's been was really, really instrumental in the design of um, the storytelling tool. But actually, from my perspective, if we had had longer for this project, I would have designed in. Um, we, so we did quite a bit of testing of the story elements with people before we built the tool, but I would also have designed in sessions for people to, like this, for people to try and to create stories. Um, and we're going to be doing that, but it's not within the kind of formal period of the project. So I think just not underestimating the time that it might take to actually um, get a chance to try things out with people and get feedback and do that kind of iterative design process. Okay, thank you. I just seeing if there's any other questions coming through. Is any other, anybody got any other questions? What has emerged for people who've used this so far? So is that anything, any key things? Yeah, thanks, Catherine, that's a great one. Um, I think that the main thing that has sort of come out is, well, first of all, um, the, the sorts of stories that people tell, um, so the ones that people have made public, obviously you can read, um, but there's also been others that people have produced that haven't um, been made public on the site, is just how, freeing it is to be able to be creative in this particular kind of way where you're not risking um you know bringing your employer into disrepute unless you unless you intend to um or you know otherwise kind of being disloyal to our institutions where you know that we obviously will all have mixed feelings about so the use of fiction as a way of telling stories that can't be told in another way i think has been um quite an important feature for people thank you jen um and I think that is probably um, time up. Wait, uh, I want to answer Jim's question about anonymity. Okay, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, I think we have 30 seconds. I will try to do it quickly. Um, I would also like to know how other people feel about this because I think um, anonymity has had just a terrible rap in the last sort of 10 years or so um, in digital education and digital cultures more broadly. And it's absolutely time that we can rehabilitate um, our approaches to anonymity. We just 100% need spaces for um, anonymous kind of low stakes um, engagement with these kinds of difficult topics. That's great, that's actually a, a good point to end on. Thanks, Jen. Can I just ask everybody to uh, give Anna and Jen a round of applause, which was a fantastic session.